job that we're going on is a uh, typical job. Uh, it's, uh, the ship is pointed to the north, which is inbound, pointed inbound on the East Basin Channel, which is a uh, side channel off the LA Main Channel. The pilot will either ask me to put up a tow line to tow him from the East Basin Channel to the main turning basin under the Vincent Thomas Bridge where we'll turn the ship around there. Pilot's exam. I'm going to have to call, uh, we have the railroad bridge down up here. i got to call them and find out how long they're going to be down because I can't go under them. Uh, Ford Avenue Drawbridge, Doug Jeffrey Foss. Ford Bridge, over. We have Ford Bridge, uh, good afternoon. This is Tug Jeffrey Foss. Uh, be able to lift for you right now, Captain. Okay, Roger, I'll be there in about four minutes. Thank you, Jeffrey Foss. See what the uh, clearance is on the Commodore Heim Bridge. That's a uh, traffic bridge that runs between Terminal Island and the mainland. And I have to see what the clearance is on that. This is my, it's approximately one o'clock, so I have a three foot tide. Uh, most of these tugs here have uh, collapsing mass. They were uh, stable mass because they're outside tugs, but they converted them to an inside tug to go under these bridges. So they broke the mass, so we let it down. And we can pass under the uh, Commodore Heim Bridge 90% uh, of the time without having them lift the bridge. So we'll get up close here and see what, on either side of the bridges, they have the clearance gauges. So you always have to check your clearances on the bridge. Take out the top of the mast and the radars. And I forget that the mast is. It's a, like any other job, a guy's been doing it for 10 or 15 years. So I'll get my glasses here and look at the uh, clearance signs on the bridge, or on the port and starboard side of the bridge, as you're coming through on, on either direction. 38. I know it's got 38 feet of clearance. Actually, it's got 39 and uh, probably about 6 inches of clearance. So I can go through with this tug. This, uh, this railroad bridge that we're just going by and out, they just lifted up for us. The Ford Avenue drawbridge was just uh, refurbished. It used to be a uh, weighted, um, one of those old style bridges that uh, lift in the center. Oh, drawbridge. Drawbridge, exactly. It used to be a drawbridge. Now they just converted it over the past year, and uh, in the future they'll just be taking the containers off the ships, put them right on the railroad cars at 12 o'clock at night. By 6 o'clock in the morning, that container will be in Phoenix, Arizona. You have to be careful with these big boats. Uh, you're not moving very fast, but uh, they throw a little bit of a wake no matter how fast you go. They got a speed limit of uh, five knots through here. If I went through here on five knots, I'd leave about a two foot wake, so I can't go that fast. That would rock them. Yeah. And it does damage to their boats too, and it's unsafe. Uh, they forget sometimes that they're on a vessel that's going to move around and get in an awkward position, and a wake will hit them. And they get knocked down and get hurt. This is, thing 14, this is a Matson 15, ship. It runs between here and Hawaii. Matson lines, they uh, more or less have the contract between uh, the mainland here and Hawaii. And uh, we have that contract on them uh, to bring them in uh, and to take them out. Um, it's an American company. Uh, they run maybe about eight or ten vessels between Hawaii and here. Yeah, everything and anything. Yeah, you can you know have your car brought over with them or buy a container and fill it up and send it over with them over to Honolulu and then they have if it's going to one of the smaller islands they have barges they can put the container on the barge and send it to a smaller island. They they handle uh, I'm pretty sure they handle about uh, close to 100 percent of all the uh, shipping going to uh, the Hawaiian Islands. PJ, you want to go out on deck and find out if uh, this ship's still going to leave at 1400? Okay, I just found out that uh, 
ship is going to leave at 1400. So we'll get away here and let them do their job. So as you see, uh, FOSS environmental people are cleaning up that boom and picking it up. It's an oil boom. And uh, the ship, Buena Ventura, the one we're going to do, is uh, approximately about 700 feet long. And uh, it's an average uh, size container vessel. We have ones that are a lot bigger and some that are smaller. So I'll come around here, the stern of it, to make sure that she's low enough in the water that when you come in on them to push, you're not going to go under it. And then you have to make sure that if you have to do a 90 degree angle off the stern or the transom of the vessel, that you're going to have enough meat, in other words, enough steel on the ship that you can lay up against. So I'm going to come in here to the dock and wait for the uh, ship to call me. Because sometimes uh, the captain wants to leave early and they're, they're ready to leave. And they're our customers, so we try to accommodate them whenever we can. My deckhand is asking me if he wants me to put up a line here in the dock. I don't want to because I don't know how much room they're going to need to remove that boom. So while I got the spare time, I got to write up my log. And it says, to or with, we're harbor operations, so if we put with harbor operations, or harbor ops. And the date, which is 120, 98, and the day is Tuesday. Now, down here, calls for the crew, which would be me, myself, Mike Brady. The chief engineer is Dan Corey. And my deckhand, or AB, is PJ Sanders. Yeah, my uh, my name is Mike Brady. I'm the uh, captain. And I fill in their hours worked at the end of the day. Now in the to the left of the log here, we list all our times, all our movements, whether we're moving light or we're Let's assisting a ship or we're moving a barge. Any, any movement uh, you have to log. So we got underway from the dock at 12.50. We arrived here at 13.25. We're not rocking too much for you to do the writing. No, no, well we're inside the harbor here. We, we won't uh, feel anything here. At least I don't. I know some people get on the vessel and they get seasick just from being on a vessel. Yeah. And this berth that we're at with this ship is TI-216, Terminal Island, it's TI. And then we're uh, put down because I'm standing by off TI-216. And I'm starting to stand by at 1325. Okay, then I'm going to get ahead of myself a little bit here and put the name of the vessel, Buena Vista. I'll look over and see how it's spelled, yeah. Jeff and... Uh Okay, Jeff and Robert. Jeff, what's your last name? Clemens. C L E M O E N S. E N S. And Robert? H A R R I S, Harris. Oh. Hi, Jeff. Would you like to be a deckhand on the pipe board like this? It doesn't whip back. The new lines that they have are not like nylon lines where they whip and they stretch a long ways, and when they snap, they're like rubber bands. These are synthetic lines. They just pop. So you don't have to worry too much about it coming back on you. But still, it's safe to be out of, be out of the way. Uh, they just give us a safe spot so we, or somewhere where we can get maybe a higher, uh, higher we can be up above the deck. Yeah. Is there a place? Yeah. Well, when I, the, the, the line will normally, 99% of the time, she'll come back where she's coming from. When she breaks, she'll come right back where she's coming from. So if she's going out our bullnose, she'll come right back to the bullnose. 
If she's going from the stern wench up to the ship, she'll come right back to the stern wench. But uh, there are there are cases where uh, they don't. You know, so nothing nothing is for sure. Well, just it, just a lot, a, of a lot of weight. You have to be extremely careful. How would you compare some of the weight? Twenty five hundred well, homes. <laughs> well, the I used to tow around an oil barge, and it was a sixty thousand barrel oil barge. And she was uh, 10,000 gross tons Security all of oil. Security go uh, the the, the, the barge would be about four or 5,000 gross yeah. tons. It had a lot of equipment on, on top of the barge. So that kind of weight, at that time, uh, the, the tug I had was a 2,200 20, horsepower tug. It took me about five barge lengths on, on uh, easy ahead. Just stop that to stop that barge, and the barge was a football field long. The uh, office is calling me on our private telephone here. Uh, KMB two seven zero uh, Jeffrey. Yeah, Mike. The agent just called on that Buena Ventura, and they want a second boat. And uh, I'm having G France hop over onto the Peter Foss. So it's going to be a little while before we get there, okay? Okay, Roger, Mary. When we brought it in here, it had a bow thruster. At, uh, maybe maybe they're not trusting it now. I noticed that uh, Foss Environmental had a boom around the ship. They're just getting it away now. Do you know anything about that? Yeah, I guess they had a spill earlier, but uh, apparently they've been cleared. Roger. They said it's going to leave on time at 2 o'clock, so uh, I haven't talked to the pilot yet. If, if he calls before he gets over here. Now what I'm going to do here, so you can get a shot on the camera, is I'm going to come alongside the ship at midships and then mosey on up to the port bow. You can see the counter on this ship, which is the tugboat's uh, dilemma. Is you want to get up as far as you can without hitting metal on the ship, metal on the tug. And I want to show you, it doesn't look from this angle, how much counter is. In other words, how much does your ship dip in with a bend from up top of the uh, hull to the part of the hull that goes in the water. You can see there's a big curve. I'm going to try to get right where the brake is. What we call the brake is where the forecastle is the furthest part of the ship, the highest part of the ship, the furthest part. That's called the forecastle of the ship. So main deck is where they carry the cargo. The brake is where the forecastle goes down to the main deck. I can see a chalk there. That's a hole in the hull that we put our line in. And I'm going to come up and try to get as close to that as I can without hitting metal on the tug and metal on the ship. Desk deck hand is motioning to me, do I want to use our uh, small line, which we call our plasma line. It's, the diameter is only four inches, but it's twice as strong is a nine inch synthetic line. And it's easier to handle. And it's like I say, it's twice as strong. Now I'm coming into the ship down here before my chalk, but with your camera, you'll be able to see how much of a counter it is on the ship that we don't want to get too close to. Then this here, and you see about another 30 feet is my chalk area. I got thinking that you're gonna be lay, lay back too far. It might, uh, you think it'll be uh, lay back too far, uh, you know, for the, uh which line? Keep an eye on that up above me, PJ. How much farther can I come, PJ? Okay, that's where we go, PJ. She's right up above you, the hole there. Turn around, take a look. Swing around to a 90 degree angle once he gets his line up. And then once he gets the line up, I'll be coming into the ship and uh, coming ahead easy on one engine to hold the ship into the dock. And once I get my line up and fast, uh, 
I'll let the pilot know. Let me stop. Jeffrey Foss, Peter Foss, back easy. He had me stop. Now he's having me back down. Lift him off. Watch yourself. It may jerk here. starting to pick up a little more headway and I'm starting to fall down a little bit with the water coming on my port side pushing the tug down a little bit so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop my port engine and boost the RPMs on my starboard engine which will make my stern want to go to port and that'll hold me up longer against the way that he's pushing the water on my port side starts to get too much and I'll bring port engine back and even them out. starboard quarter, the same uh, position on the ship that he was on this side, only on the other side. The pilot gets up here in the turning basin, he's going to have him push on the quarter on the starboard side and have me push on the bow on the port side, which will turn him clockwise and he'll do a 180 degree turn so that he's facing right now where his stern is, straight out the channel. And he'll have the Peter Foss stop and just either trail behind him or come up on the starboard bow and put up a line. He'll have us stop and we're just drag along on this side until he gets either all the way out to the breakwater or almost to the breakwater. And too hard. As you can see, it's the buckets that hit down below with the main deck that doesn't even come up against the ship. I got to kind of twist out here, twist out at a 45 so that I get the bulk of the uh, wheelhouse away from the ship, get at a 45 degree angle so that my bow putting is against the hull, then slide up get as far up as I can by being safe so I can give him a good angle of push and then come ahead into it. But it's uh, tricky where you got to twist out. You can't get up any farther and twist out because by going up there I would knock something off up top. I got to twist out right here and then slide up. When, when I'm sliding up I can't have the, the side of the tug come into the ship at all, just the bow of the tug. So what the ship will do is when he gives us tells tells me to come ahead at the bow here, he'll have the Peter Foss come ahead at the quarter, and then he'll start backing down. When these large vessels back down, they always back down to port, and that's the way he wants the stern to swing to port. And so that will help him out as well. It'll help him stop him, and also to bring his stern to port. And in all three motions of him backing and us pushing on the port bow and the Peter Foss pushing on the starboard quarter will make this boat spin pretty quick. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that was him pilot just telling me to come out and start pushing half towards him. Now, I'm, like I told you, 
I'm trying to get my bow in there so I can slide up. And now I'm going to start sliding up a little bit. Because if you look back at the stern and watch the real estate going by his stern of the ship, and that'll give you how fast he's spinning right now. The ship at this time is backing down, and I can see Wash coming out of the stern of the vessel. So he is backing down a little bit. Stop his forward motion. Since these guys are getting turned around in these tight areas. His order was Jeffrey Foss easy, so I just bring it down to dead slow ahead on two. Try to keep my angle at a 90, get my rudder over, and uh, hold this position here. He must be uh, spinning too fast for him that he wants to slow down. Doesn't have too much farther to go to get lined up on the channel. But like I was saying, uh, this is what we do to assist them to move around these small areas and turn around in these small areas. The ships keep getting bigger. They can carry more cargo. Jeffrey Boss, stop. Watch your ears there, Robert. Okay. Okay, you just had me stop. Now we're going to drift back where we were before. Stop him. Um, you can do that. Sometimes that happens where they need us to stop it. Well, we're in good shape here. As we're being pulled along here by this ship that we just pulled off the dock, but uh, right now we have a headline going from our bullnose, which is the pointy part of our tug, up to a chalk in the ship. Now, we have these new lines that our company has purchased that are extremely light, extremely small. This is only a four-inch line. It's, uh, you can put your fingers around this line, and it's got twice the strength of these nine-inch synthetics that we use. They're about twice as expensive, or even three times as expensive. But the reason why we had them is because they're so good, they're light, um, they can take uh, twice the strength. Our people can handle them. We don't have any back problems with these lines. You can pick them up and throw them around like they're feathers. Uh, I've had uh, people from uh, ships that have pulled these lines up that have actually yelled down to us, is that your messenger? When's your main line going to come up? And we explained to them that's the main line. They want to know the manufacturer and how they can get them because they always have people with pulled backs trying to pull up these nine inch synthetic lines. Once they get wet, they're extremely heavy. And if, you, then if they don't put up a line where there's a capstan on the ship, they have to pull it up by hand. So this was a union representative from uh, Matson line that was very uh, adamant to me that he wanted to get these lines aboard his vessel to help out his people and uh, make sure nobody got hurt. We, we want to keep these lines. So we're still being pulled along here at a pretty good rate. See how fast he's pulling us. Right at five knots, it's a harbor speed. We're going at five knots right now. So he's going to have us drag along with him here until he gets probably out into uh, the, what we call the outer harbor, which is the flats, which is uh, in between the main channel here and the breakwater. a little sunny here. Working in LA, you always need a good pair of sunglasses. 